Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John Matthew. In this video, we are going to learn basic problems in straight lines. And this video will be useful only if you know the basic concepts of direction ratios, cosines and equations of line. That means if you didn't watch video lesson 1, lesson 2 and lesson 3, pause this video right now and watch them. Okay, let's start. So look at this. Find the equation of a line passing through the point and the direction ratios. In lesson number 2, we discussed three different types of equation for straight lines in three dimension. And let me remind you, equation means a rule followed by every coordinate in the line. Remember, a line is made up of infinite number of points and equation means a rule followed by every point in that line. So, what we basically do is, we will assume x, y, z represents any point on the line. Can it be this point? Yes. Can it be this point? Yes. And we write the rule with the help of x, y and z. Anyway, we learned symmetric equation. Symmetric equation means Cartesian form. So please write, the Cartesian form is x minus x1. So look at this, the minimum requirements are one point and the direction vector or the direction ratios. By the way, let me remind you, the direction vector will be i plus 5j minus 2k. So the answer goes like x minus 3 divided by 1 is equal to y minus minus will be plus divided by 5 is equal to z minus 1 divided by minus 2 is equal to and some variable. Okay, so this is the Cartesian equation or it is called the symmetric form. Now, if you want to convert Cartesian form into parametric form, it's very easy. All you do is you equate the quantity with x to the variable t and then you equate the quantity with y to t and z to t. So you are going to get x is equal to t plus 3 comma y is equal to 5t minus 2 and z is equal to minus 2t plus 1. Now remember Soon we will be learning very complex problems in 3D like cylinder, cone, etc. And at that point, you will understand the importance of um, what you call this parametric form. Now look at this. Finding the parametric form actually means you are able to access every point on the look. It gives you the coordinates of x, y, z. And what is x, y, z? x, y, z represents every point on the line or it can be like it gives you it basically gives you access to every point on the line with the help of is one variable for example when you plug in t is equal to zero can you see you're getting the same point which is on the line when you plug in t equal to one you're get, going to get another point when you plug in t is equal to one by two you will get another point when you plug in t is equal to uh, like what you call 100, you will get some other point on the line. So, finding the parametric form actually means you are able to access every point on the line. And this is the parametric point t plus 3, 5t minus 2, minus 2t plus 1. So, basically by finding the parametric form of an equation, or finding the parametric equation or by converting Cartesian equation into parametric form what we access is every point on the system okay now if you want you can learn the vector form also but normally they do not ask the vector form anyway for those who are like really interested in this subject the vector form goes like you take the point as a position vector 3i minus 2j plus k plus some multiple of the direction vector 1i 
plus 5j minus 2k. Now let's go for another problem. So now look at this. They are asking you equation of a line. Now remember, we are doing basic problems. Now equation of a line means you should be capable of writing Cartesian, parametric and vector form. And when we do complex problems, when we do a little bit of good quality problems, according to the problem, you will be using one of them. And normally, and normally uh, Cartesian and parametric will be more than enough. Now look at this. In this question, they are asking you to find the equation of a line passing through two distinct points. So they have given two distinct points. But now... Um, look at the formula the minimum requirements are one point and the direction so we don't have any shortage of points but we do not know the direction but wait a minute if I know two points on the line definitely I can create the direction because given a direction you will be able to draw only one line parallel to the direction given a direction for example let the direction be on what you call same side or opposite side the line will be unique okay so the first thing to do we have to find the direction ratios so you can form the direction vector also same stuff so the direction ratios are x2 minus x1 y2 minus y1 that will be 1 minus minus 2 3 and minus 2 minus 1 minus 3 and you can use any point of your choice I'm going to use point A so my equation will be x minus x1 by actually this is x2 minus x1 is equal to y by 3 is equal to z minus 1 by minus 3 is equal to t so if you want to make this a formula uh, the idea is very simple you assume the first point to be x1 y1 z1 second point to be x2 y2 z2 now remember you have the freedom to choose um, point a or point b that's completely up to you so you can by heart the equation to be the symmetric equation or the Cartesian equation to be x minus x1 by x2 minus x1 y minus y1 by y2 minus y1 z minus z1 by z2 minus z1 is equal to t so if you feel like by hearting this as the formula okay that's a very good idea okay now tell me how do you convert this into parametric form and what is parametric form parametric form means you should be really happy because it gives us access to each and every point on the line knowing the parametric form means you know every point on the line so the parametric form is yeah tell me x is equal to t plus 3 now what will be the y coordinate 3 t minus 2 and the set coordinate will be minus 3 t plus 1 okay now let's go to the next question okay so find the equation of a line parallel to this line okay so they have given uh, one line I mean the equation of a line so let's say this is the red color line the given line is the red color line and the required line is the black color line so they have given the equation of the red color line x minus 1 by 3 y plus 1 by 4 is equal to z minus 7 by 6 is equal to lambda and that means you know the direction of this line wait a minute if lines are parallel in lesson number two we learned that they have proportional direction ratios or no harm in assuming the same numbers because if they are proportional it will be something like 3 multiplied by some constant 4 multiplied by some constant 6 multiplied by some constant and when you take the ratio basically you're going to get the same numbers so once more if two lines are parallel we already learned in um, 
lesson number two that's the second video that they have proportional multiples okay no harm in taking the same thing um, but I cannot use the word same direction ratio because because I can never say that 1 2 3 and 2 4 6 are equal so for the uh, mathematical language sake I'm saying proportional direction ratios but practically I'm going to use the same numbers because once you simplify this or once you take the ratio it turns out to be 1 2 3 but mathematically we should not use the word equal because 1 and 2 are not equal 2 and 4 are not equal they are multiples they are proportional okay so that's it so once more let me tell you now we have the direction ratios of the required line ah they have given one point on the required line okay that is more than enough so the equation of the required line is come on tell me this time try to tell x minus the coordinate x coordinate divided by 3 y minus 7 divided by 4 is equal to z minus 10 divided by 6 is equal to some constant um, okay that's it now if you want you can learn how to convert into parametric form okay now in question number 4 they are asking you find the angle between find the angle between two lines now this question becomes very very easy once you realize that angle between two lines is the angle between the direction vectors the angle between two lines is the angle between the direction vectors so that we can apply the formula for vectors do you remember the formula from vectors you might have learned in very younger classes itself the cosine of the angle between two vectors is the dot product divided by modulus of each vector you might have learned this formula somewhere in your younger classes or if you do not like the vector approach if you do not like the vector approach you can go for the ready-made formula a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 it's the same thing what is a dot b a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 what is modulus root under a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square so the, it's the same stuff if you want to learn the vector formula or if you want you just by heart this formula but anyway uh, you have to understand one more thing when you have two lines the you can see that one angle is acute and another angle will be obtuse this will always happen unless and until the angle become 90 degree 90 degree so unless the lines are perpendicular unless the lines are perpendicular one of the angle will be less than 90 and one of the angle will be more than 90 so in case in case you are interested in the acute angle for some other application if you are interested in the acute angle the trick is very simple in your calculate when you try to find when you calculate and try to find theta you make sure this quantity is kept inside a modulus symbol because do you remember in the first quadrant all the trigonometric functions are positive so basically if you get cos theta to be a positive number then theta will be an acute angle it has to be between 0 and 90 it cannot jump beyond 90 okay now let's come to the point so what are the direction ratios of the first line first line is blue line let's assume 1 1 minus 2 if you love vectors you can call it i plus j minus 2k and what about the direction ratios of the second line 2 3 1 once more let me tell you if you did not watch lesson number 1 and lesson number 2 you may not be able to follow this video properly so if you have not watched direction ratios and stuff i will strongly recommend pause the video and watch that now okay so what's the formula for cos theta 
dot product divided by modulus modulus now dot product means 2 into 1 that is 2 3 into 1 that is 3 1 into minus 2 that is minus 2 the whole divided by the length of the vector that will be root under 1 plus 1 plus 4 that is root 6 and here root under 4 plus 1 plus 9 that will be 10 root 14 so cos theta is equal to root 6 into root 14 if you want you can simplify so theta is equal to cos inverse uh, 3 by root 6 into root 14 of course this is the acute angle because this part has been kept positive so that's it that is a very small video and this covered all the basic things that you need to know about the line okay so i'll be back with another video so till then my friends bye